I am flying above the Atlantic Ocean, about to land at John F. Kennedy International Airport in Queens, New York. But that is not my final destination, as I am flying to London in the United Kingdom. This will be my first time back in Europe for over 10 years, since I was a small boy, so I am beyond excited for this. This trip is going to be nearly two weeks long, and I'm going to be visiting a lot of towns and cities in several different countries around Western Europe. I will be on a Trafalgar tour called the European Whirl with my family in order to see the Oberammergau Passion Play, so I did not plan this, and things certainly aren't thought out and structured as I would have, but this is an awesome opportunity, and we will be seeing a lot of cool places. I don't think I've been to the JFK airport before. It opened back in 1948, and there's a lot of international flights in and out of here. Here's a Lego Statue of Liberty, and here's a Lego version of Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe portrait. This is a sculpture of young Rembrandt. I will very briefly be in his hometown of Amsterdam. That over there is Aero Saarinen's iconic TWA Flight Center from 1962. That is probably one of the most famous airport terminals ever built, but I believe they turned it into a hotel recently. Now boarding my flight to London. This is a Virgin Atlantic flight. I've never taken one of these. It is a very big airplane, and unfortunately I got put in the middle aisle, so there's definitely no window seat access for this flight. The flight to Heathrow Airport is about seven hours. This is an overnight flight, but I didn't get much sleep. And then crossing back into our Shannon in Ireland to take in a slight right hand turn towards Cardiff before we start our ascent into London. Weather there, a little bit similar to here, about 15 to 16 degrees centigrade, 16. They do provide dinner. It's a weird chicken quesadilla, if you can call it that, with rice. I do appreciate having the map. I'm constantly following it, and I wish all airplanes, no matter how small, had this available. Closing in on London, I'm currently flying above Ireland. And this plane does have some cameras so you can watch what it looks like on the outside. There's the scenery of southern England below, though I wish I could actually see it. we have touched down in England. This is my very first time in the United Kingdom. So London Heathrow International Airport is kind of a mess. I had seen news articles the day prior that they had an extreme baggage delay. Thousands of bags didn't arrive and were lost, so there's still a sea of unclaimed baggage here in the baggage claim. Surprisingly, my suitcase made it, so that's good. 
Here is a British pound. Of course, Queen Elizabeth adorns this one. And on this one, they have a portrait of JMW Turner. Now I'm taking a cab to my hotel. The place I'm staying at here in London is awesome, and it has a fantastic location. But enjoy the scenery on the way there. London is among the largest cities in the world, and I can understand that. It's absolutely sprawling. I know there's a lot first today, but this is the first time I've seen driving on the left side of the road. They have that here in the UK, and drivers are seated on the right side of the car. It's very different. Passing by the Natural History Museum in Kensington. This is one of the best natural history museums in the world. Unfortunately, I won't be able to visit it on this trip. And this is the Victoria and Albert Museum, which I will also not be able to visit this time. We're passing the world famous Harrods department store, known for its excessive luxury and its purchase a few decades ago by Muhammad Al Fayed, whose son Dodi dated Princess Diana. This is the opulent Ritz Hotel, one of the most famous hotels in the world. That's St. James's Palace. Passing by the National Gallery at Trafalgar Square. Over there is the London Eye. Now driving alongside the River Thames. There's the Tower of London, and that's an ancient Roman wall.
All right, this is the Tower Hotel, where I have the pleasure of staying for the next few nights inside one of the most hated buildings in London. This brutalist monolith has an amazing location right next to the Tower Bridge, and the Tower of London is right next to the bridge. Here's the fanciful lobby. I have to say, the breakfasts here are among the best I've ever had. It's an incredible buffet. There's the view out towards St. Catherine's Docks. Seriously, the breakfasts here are delectable. This is my first room before getting moved. They're very nice rooms. This view is great. It looks over the starting point of the Tower Bridge, and there's a pretty clear view of the Tower of London, one of the city's most important historic locations. Even the White Tower is somewhat visible. I did go inside and have separate videos on the tower. It's phenomenal. Then I got moved to the side facing the river, which I was fine with, because this is a view of the tower bridge out my hotel room window. It doesn't get any better than that. There's gonna be a big ship passing through. Wow, they're really moving a cruise ship under the tower bridge. That thing barely fits through. In front of the hotel, there's the girl with a dolphin statue. This sculpture of a naked girl dancing with a dolphin was created by David Wynn in 1973. It's a pretty bizarre sculpture, but it has a spectacular location. Well, that view is something else. The Victorian Suspension Bridge is one of London's most iconic sites, and it's an absolutely beautiful bridge. This is so cool. So I had about two and a half days in London, much longer than any other spot I'm going to visit on this trip, so I did film several other videos here in this amazing city, so make sure to take a look at those. Also check out my other videos from across Europe and America. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a lot of European travel content in the future, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.